Hi, I'm here with Soren. How are you doing? I'm um, very good. Thank Excellent. You. How are you enjoying UBS? Uh, well, very good. Um, there's been lots of very interesting discussions. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been very good. Okay, now you work on virtualization and stuff. Is that with the server team? Yeah. Okay, so what's changing in virtualization for Jaunty? Team? Um, well, cloud computing is, unless you've been living on the rock, it's, it's very, very big now. Um, so we're going to put a lot of effort into that um, in the form of probably using Eucalyptus, which is a kind of a free implementation of Amazon's EC2. Okay. Um, we're going to be offering that as a as a cloud in a box kind of solution, so that people can deploy it cloud in their own data center. Okay. So what are the advantages of that over deploying lots of individual standalone servers? Um, well, the, the the advantage is that you have like a central management system um, where, like in the uh, in the way that Eucalyptus work now, works now, is you've got like a bunch of images that you can fire up instances of. Like if you have like a web server image, then you can just dynamically fire up more web servers to deal with higher load or and then take them down again when the load decreases again. So it's like mostly a management thing in in, in that respect. So do they sit on top of a virtualization platform? Right. Currently, um, like EC2, uh, it uses Zen as, as the back end, but we're going to be changing it, uh, well, we aren't, but the upstream is going to mm. be changing it to KVM. Um, okay. So, yeah. so that would allow you to, so, well, regardless of the platform it sits upon, you can deploy a host, customize it, presumably it needs a host name change and things, or does it not even get that far? Well, no, it, it kind of sits at a, at a different level where you have... You, you take a bunch of nodes, uh, like physical machines, right? And then you add, install the software on it, and that constitutes your cloud. And then you can put stuff into the cloud by uh, a well-defined API. You say that, hey, I'd like to have uh, like Firefox, the web service. And then it fires it up, and then that is just an image that you have created beforehand. Right. Um, which is like a, you can think of it kind of like starting on a live CD, because it doesn't change. So you, you're just starting on a live CD, and then you can put like the stuff you want to serve into it, and then it, it serves it from there. And then it dies again. Yeah, you take it away again when you've done the job. Exactly. So is this useful for something like, um, well, like distributing Ubuntu perhaps, when there's a big peak at every release, and um, and then after that it perhaps dies, dies down a bit? Right, yeah, the, the way that I'm told that it works in Canonical Status Center for release time, because, well, release time is insanity. Mm. So they need like lots of extra servers doing release um, uh, web serving. So yeah, in that respect, it would have been very convenient to, to, to be able to do that in a just have a simple API to describe these actions, like fire up, replace all the build Ds with uh, web servers or whatever. Mm. Yeah, and, and don't do any you know, don't build any packages for twenty four hours or forty eight hours. Just, yeah. just serve web content. Right. Okay. So how do you um, do? You need shared storage to do this sort of thing, or how, do, how does that it work? Kind of depends on how you how you're doing it, but in many respects, you. The way that Eucalyptus and EC2 does it right now, you don't really need shared storage. But one of the other things that we'd like to do with cloud computing is offering a way to have like a dynamic, dynamically expanding or shrinking data center where you uh, you have shared storage, and that means that if all, if you want to move a uh, running virtual machine from one physical node to another, all you need to do is move the memory segment of it right. because you've got the storage somewhere else. Um, and that allows you to, during business hours, you, all your physical nodes might be like running at full speed or thereabouts. But outside business hours, there's only like maybe 20% of the load. So you just move it, move all the load onto fewer physical machines, and then shut the rest off and save lots and lots of power. Um, and that obviously requires some sort of um, shared storage in there as well. And that's a sort of live migration thing yeah, exactly. lots of virtualization platforms seem to do. But VMware does it, Zen does it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so Ubuntu moved from Zen to being having KVM as the preferred virtualization platform was a couple of releases ago? Uh, for Hardy, yeah. For Hardy, okay. We were never really that big on Zen, but we really started pushing uh, KVM for Hardy. Yeah. So what, what is it that's so great about KVM? Well, one of the greatest parts of it is that with, for instance, with, with Zen, you actually have like a different kernel that you're booting. You, there's a You've got the DOM serial, the DOM U, but underneath that you've got this hypervisor thing that's really running a different kind of kernel called the Nemesis kernel, which provides the hypervisor. But we're Linux people, we like to run like Linux, not Nemesis. <laughs> so 
it's really a much more straightforward way to, to, to be doing it. Also, you, you, don't, you can just use your regular operating system to, to run the hypervisor. Um, so the, the entire model under design is just way more, it's easier to deal with and it's easier to, to maintain in, in almost every way. And does it perform well as well? In terms oh, of network and disk? Yeah, it's, it's fantastic, uh, in my opinion. It, it, it performs really well. You, for most uh, purposes, you don't really feel, you don't feel the difference in, in, in the virtualized environment compared to the real one. And how can you manage Zen? Uh, sorry, how can you manage KVM virtual machines? Are there graphical tools, or does it all command line stuff? Well, there's a management layer in between called libvirt, um, which is both a library and like a daemon that sits around looking after your KVM instances. And you can tell it just to chuck them around or move them el elsewhere. Um, and then there's a uh, uh, there's a graphical application as well called Vert Manager that talks to libvirt. Um, and then you can use that to, you can look at the console of the machine if, if you're running, uh, you could be running a desktop on your virtual machine, then you can use that to, to look at it and you can manage it, drag stuff around and mm. make stuff happen that way. So there's all, there's tools at all levels, you've got command line tools as well, so it's very convenient. And um, do you need to have hardware support for virtualization on, on the chips in order yeah. to use yeah, KVM? Yeah. Um, what about um, the... Uh, Sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. What, what about um, the sort of power virtualization that Zen does, which allows you to run Linux, even if you haven't got hardware support? Right. KVM doesn't do that. Um, it, KVM requires the hardware support to be there. It does kind of, it does some power virtualized stuff, like um, it's got a power virtualized uh, IDE um, controller and um, and network card as well, which uh, makes the uh, all the hassle of having to to do the emulation of various things when you, you have to emulate a complete network card and the client has to deal with uh, talk to a to a network card instead of just throwing stuff onto the network, for instance. So we've got some called Vert IO um, that is a really simple layer in between um, in between the guest and the host instead, which mm. makes everything much faster and removes all the bottlenecks at that point. There. Anyway. Presumably KVM on a host with the full virtualization support on the chip, you can therefore run BSD, you could run Windows, you could run anything that run yeah, on a 64-bit or 32-bit. Yeah, because it does like full virtualization. Whereas okay. like what Send does in, in the old days, Send does full virtualization now as well. But mm. what it does when you're doing power virtualization, you have to you can't run unmodified stuff in it. So you need to be running like a special kind of Linux kernel. That instead of trying to talk to hardware that's not there, it talks to this mm. special kind of different API. So, are there people out there who are running uh, an Ubuntu server with KVM and uh, that are you know, running Windows production servers and other Linux production servers? And excellent. Well, that's really good news. Yeah. Um, so, where can people find out more about uh, virtualization on Ubuntu? Um, well, there's a there's some excellent wiki pages there for. Uh, Helping you set it up, set up the entire environment, and well, in fact, the, the package just does a lot of the work as well. Um, I can't remember the URLs, but they're, they're on the wiki somewhere. Okay. And there's an IRC channel as well called Ubuntu Vert on Freenode, uh, with lots of helpful, helpful people. <laughs> okay, so, cool. So, how have you found this UDS overall? Busy. Yeah. Very, very busy. As I said, cloud computing is a very, very big thing now, and everyone thinks so, and that kind of keeps me busy. What's the main thing you're going to take away if you're going to take one thing away from this week? Uh, that I'm going to be even busier than <laughs> ever was before. Excellent. Okay, well, thanks for talking to me today. You too.